In this tutorial, we will create one simple animation. Let us delete this default cube. Now from the add menu, let us add one UV sphere. The sphere does not look very smooth. So let us change its appearance little bit. If you are not very familiar with this properties panel, or the editor, check out my other videos where I explain them. Okay, so you may already know that in any animation, we display a series of still frames in quick succession. It creates an illusion in the viewer's mind about the motion. We can check in the output properties, Blender is using 24 frames per second by default. It will show 24 frames per second. We need to only design the start and the end positions. Blender will create the intermediate frames automatically. In this animation we want this ball to drop from some height like this. It will hit the ground somewhere around here, and then bounce off and move to this direction. For any animation, we need to use the Timeline Editor. We already have the Timeline Editor here. We need this editor in order to bind our object positions to a particular frame number. This field indicates the current frame that we are in. This is the start frame. And this is the end frame of the video. We are working with 24 frames per second. Let us make an animation of 3 seconds duration which means 72 frames. We are currently at frame number 1. Let us move the ball to the initial position now. We want the ball to drop from a distance and also from some height, like this. We can always fine tune these values in the properties tab. Let us enter minus 4 for X and plus 4 for the Z position. Now we need to bind these positions permanently to the current frame which is frame number 1, so right click on the property values and select insert keyframes. Now somewhere around the middle of the animation, let us go to frame number 36 for example, the ball should come down and touch the ground somewhere around here. We need to make it a keyframe. First do the fine tuning of the position values in the properties tab. And then right click and select insert keyframes. Now let us go to the end frame of the animation, which is frame number 72. We need to position the ball. It should bounce off to some height, approximately somewhere around this. Now fine tune these values as you want and insert the keyframes just like before. Alternatively, you can also press shortcut key I on your keyboard to insert a keyframe. So here in the timeline editor, this button allows us to go to the previous keyframe, and this is for the next keyframe. This is to go to the start, and this is for the end of the video. Our video starts at frame number 1, and it ends at 250. Since the animation length is only 72, let us keep the video length maybe as 100 frames. Okay, now go to the start of the animation. We can press this play button to preview our animation here. That looks nice. But we have to also check it through our camera. So let us go to the camera view. And nothing is really visible. This is because the camera is right now pointing to some arbitrary direction. To rectify this, first lock the camera to the view. Then zoom, rotate or pan this view to make the objects clearly visible through the camera. I assume that you are already aware of the view navigation and how to adjust the camera view. Otherwise you can check the supplementary links given in the video description. After we are done here, let us go to the start of the animation and verify that the camera position is correct. We will then check all other keyframe positions and tweak it wherever needed. We have now completed the design part of this animation. Let us also add some background. Add one plane for the floor and enlarge it a bit. Then add one more plane for the background wall, make it upright by changing its rotation properties in the property editor. These are not necessary at all for the animation, it is just for the look and feel. Now, let us play and verify the scene one final time. Then go to the output tab here. You will see so many different options in this tab. You will need to change only two things here. For the output file location, select some folder like desktop. Then in the output file format, select this last option, FFMPEG. Now go to the render menu and select render animation. It will create the output video. This process will take some time. Once it is complete, minimize the windows and open the output video file. That's cool. I hope you liked this tutorial. Thanks for watching.